the reform of the Harbour Service is, of course, to bring it back into the marketplace and degrade it back again into making healthcare a commodity. So it's not reform at all. It starts when Margaret Thatcher started contracting out domestics and, uh, and porters and laundry services. And again, just the process of administering, asking people to put in bid for contracts, costs money in and of itself to write the contract for what you want, rather than just have domestics doing the cleaning. But then, to, to win the contract, you have to put the cheapest bid in. So the ward I worked on at the time, we had two full-time cleaners on in the morning and a part-time cleaner on in the evening. When I finished at the hospital, I had a half a cleaner on in the morning and then one between about 10 wards in the evening. It wasn't cheaper when people get MRSA and infections, which then might cost the whole of what you've saved on the contract on one person if they're in intensive care. I mean, there was a real feeling of ownership about the NHS when it started. People felt that they were doing it themselves, that it was their possession, and they've lost that. So the cost of running the health service, the admin costs, was about 6% before that started, and then they moved up to about 12%, and now they're heading in the direction of American costs for running the health service, anything between 18, 20, 25%. You can see the politicians have chosen to waste a huge amount of money on marketising the service. I've got a big picture. No, 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 advances that have been made in British medicine as a result of the NHS. I mean, there are many things that have taught the rest of the world, so far as the NHS was concerned. This was a very uh, inventive organisation with lots of new initiatives. I do hope we don't go down the American, the American system whereby the first thing you met as you come in with broken legs or whatever, with someone with a clipboard who says, are you insured? When there's money there, the private sector is very happy to be in there, taking the cash, thank you very much, and paying its shareholders. And when the money isn't there anymore, as we saw locally, after only a couple of years of involvement in primary care, they were off. People are ready to defend the National Health Service. They do know about it. They do know the rewards of it. They do know about the care and the treatment they get. They're all going there every day. You can see it. I can see it more than ever. And I've got a lot to be thankful for, and so has my wife on the National Health Service. I think it will happen. I think they will understand the situation on the NHS. That is the one institution from 1945 that needs to be defended. We've lost, lost well, most of the others, if not all the others. But the National Health Service, if the attack, the, the right Tories, Lib Dems attack the National Health Service, if we don't understand that we've got to do everything up to and including breaking law to defend the National Health Service, then we're finished. We were defending 